Hey everyone, we are in a different area today because today I have a different video for you guys. I have picked up a package from Maker Farm and I have tons of goodies. But you can see here, I have a different heat bed. I've picked up, so my original printer is the 8 inch Prusa i3b that I love. But sometimes 8 inches is not enough space for some things that I want to print. And they've recently come out with their 12 inch model. Well, I don't want to have to rebuy the entire printer, but the uh, Maker Farm does sell a nice 8 inch to 12 inch conversion kit. Um, so this is uh, 8 inches by 12 inches, and it's a heat bed replacement or entire Y axis replacements. Um, so you can see that I'm going to have a lot more area to play with with this kit. And it comes with everything you'd expect. It comes with all of the replacements for the uh, Y-axis, all of the uh, replacements for the V-rails and all of that. And it also comes with a heat bed relay because this heat bed requires so much more power than the ramps can provide. So they have a relay that we're going to have to hook up. So this is going to be a fun little project. Um, I also received a few other things from Maker Farm. You can see here that I have another NEMA 17 motor, a, another hexagon, um, 1.75 millimeter hot ends, and some more miscellaneous hardware. But this is for another episode. So the first thing we need to figure out is how to power that relay. It's going to require much more than the ramps can provide. So I'm taking a look at the power supply I have. I have a 450 watt ATX power supply that I've been using everything with. And if I take a look at the, the stats on the back, we have, um, this is two 12 volt rails. And from what I can tell is I'm only using one rail, one 12 volt rail for the, uh, the ramps board. So that means that we have another 12, um, the first 12 volt rail uh, that we can power our heat bed directly from. So I should just be able to grab some of these wires over here and find probably probably this connector here. Um, this should be the first 12 volt rail. And so we're going to wire these up to the heat bed relay and hopefully we'll be able to power it. Because I want to be able, to, I want to test that this power supply will work because Maker Farm no longer recommends using the ATX power supply. Uh, he recommends some other different power supplies for it. So I want to make sure that this is going to work before I go ahead and remove the y-axis off of the machine with the heat bed that I know that works. So let's test out some power first. Okay, so I should have everything wired up. I have the relay here, and the relay wires are connected to the D8 where the old heat bed was uh, connected. And hopefully what that will do is when the signal is sent, it will flip this relay, and I have the first rail, I have three wires from the first rail of my power supply going into here, and here's the output. So hopefully what will happen is as soon as the relay switches, it'll send power from the power supply through the heat bed. So these two middle wires are the heat bed wires, and then I have the three ground wires connected to the end here. So hopefully the relay will work. So when I tell the printer to heat up, it'll heat up this print bed. So let's give that a try. So first test, does it spark? Yep, nothing's exploding yet. That's a good sign. The bed does not feel like it's heating up, so that's also a good sign. So let's go to prepare temperatures and tell the bed to heat up to I don't know, 80 degrees. And, oh, the relay switched. Oh, I feel heat. Think that might have worked. I didn't see anything happening with the relay there. Oh, this is definitely getting warm though. Cool guys, I'm gonna kill it. And hopefully bring the bed down to zero degrees through the relay as well. We are good. So now that I know that the relay works and everything's wired up correctly, 
and I know that this power supply can heat the bed. Let's do the conversion, shall we? And while the time lapse is going, let me talk a little bit more about this kit. So this kit can be purchased from Maker Farm for about $100. This is specifically the 8 inch to 8 inch by 12 inch uh, heat bed upgrade. They now have new upgrades where you can change your 8 inch printer from an 8 inch to a 10 inch or an 8 inch to a 12 inch or a 10 inch to a 12 inch. And that's a full printer upgrade that is all of the parts for both X, Y, and Z axis uh, upgrade. This specific one was only the Y axis, so it's not quite as large of a build area as some of the upgrades you can do, but it was definitely the cheaper option. And the quality of this upgrade is outstanding, like all of Maker Farm's stuff. I've never really had a problem with any of their things. Um, the laser cut wood was all cut pretty well. Um, it came with all of the hardware you needed. The most difficult part was this part, getting the Y axis uh, belts correct because there's really not a lot of room for error when it comes to getting that belt positioned just right um, because the, the motor can only move so far so you, in order to get proper attention you really need to spend some time to get that, uh, that length of belt cut correctly but besides that everything else was pretty standard it only took me about uh, a weekend to do over that uh, two day weekend I just kind of put it together other than that, yeah, check out Maker Farm's website for more details on all of the possible upgrades if you're thinking about doing this. I highly recommend it. It's working out really well for me, and it was a pretty quick upgrade. See so yeah, that we now have this 8x12 heat bed with the glass on top. Just had to run out to Lowe's and grab it. Um, I also have some of the cork underneath uh, to act as an insulator. And the conversion was actually really easy. It just required replacing the rails, the heat bed assembly, and the two side pieces. Uh, the back piece was supposed to be replaced, but if I walk around there, it was supposed to be replaced with this piece. Um, but apparently this piece was a little too thick, and I couldn't get this into the slots. So I just decided to, the only change was it made the, these deeper, so it just took a Dremel and Dremel that out. Um, that's so that the screws on the bottom of the bed, when it goes all the way out, uh, the screws actually push past here. Um, but everything's wired and ready to go. And if I pull up Proner face, I can show you the full size of this. So this is 100, 200, where it used to stop. But now I can go a full 300. I have 300 millimeters of uh, Y axis now, which is amazing. And if you look past here, you can see that the screws actually pop out a fair distance. Um, so I need to keep that in mind when I move this over. But now that it's all assembled, it's time to move this back in my room and get it all calibrated. Let's go. So welcome back to my room. As you can tell, I've had to rotate the machine to fit it onto the dresser top because it's just too long to fit the way that I had before. I really don't like this configuration quite as much because it makes getting to all the dials and stuff kind of awkward. But you can see here that I have it uh, running. This is the first time that it's actually running and Slicer does some weird stuff. So I have it printing the first test prints here. I have my favorite calibration object, just the very thin wall object, uh, printing on all four corners and then the two center pieces. So I have six going at once uh, to kind of test how I've leveled the bed and things like that. Um, there's a bug in Slicer, if you just saw that previous bit. Um, there's a bug in Slicer version 1.2.6. Um, where if you tell it to print individual objects, it kind of like moves back to the other object. It's, I don't know, it does weird things, so it just kind of messed up my, my print bed there. Um, but everything's working. Uh, I'm testing out the full 300 millimeter dimension here. Um, I think we can get some pretty large prints going, and I think I can get all uh, 12 inches of Y-axis working just as well. So it's going to take a little bit of time to calibrate the bed again and I'm going to have to do some modifications. If you notice I have my OctoPrint webcam here because this corner is drastically different from my 8 inch version. So I'm not going to be able to just put on the camera mount that I had. So I'm going to have to design a new camera mount for this. 
which will be fun so we'll see how that happens um, but for the most part it's working and it's just gonna be me calibrating this so again thank you guys for watching this has been a fun little project if you have the 8 inch Prusa it's only uh, it's only about a hundred bucks to get the extended version and depending on what you want to print that may or may not be worth it I think it's worth it and it's turned out really well and the first print from my upgraded Maker Farm printer is finishing up now. Uh, you can see that I'm printing just another copy of the Wade's extruder. Um, this extruder system is going to be set up for some flexible filament, so be sure to subscribe to see that when it's coming down the line. But otherwise, this printer is working just fine. Um, I am going to unfortunately have to take off the heat bed and tighten a couple screws. You can hear that there's some kind of vibration happening uh, when the bed moves back and forth. So I'm gonna have to take that off and tighten everything up again. So that's unfortunate because I'd have to re-level the bed. But other than that, everything seems like it's working just fine. The heat bed only took about 10 or so minutes to heat up to 90 degrees. But it did take quite a bit longer to get up to 110. Um, it took at least like I don't know, 40 minutes after the print started to even start approaching that temperature. So the power supply may not be sufficient once everything's running, including you know the motors and the, uh, the hot end and all that. That may be overtaxing the power supply. Um, but besides that, everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. This has been a fun project. Be sure to like the video if you've liked the video and to subscribe for some more stuff coming on the way. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.